In the labyrinthine corridors of American politics, Charleston White's incendiary reaction to Kamala Harris' potential bid for the presidency, following Joe Biden's step down, unveils a tapestry of entrenched misogyny and racial complexities that warrants a profound dissection. Man, man, they got me f***ed up. I wouldn't dare vote for no black man. Now man, man, listen, I was raised by black women. I got a grandmother, I got black sisters, but I wouldn't dare put no black woman in no position of the White House, the commander-in-chief of the military, a black woman. Not only that, a mixed black married to a white man. Her pH balance is way off with that white dick. Man, you can't make me believe. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. Man, Kamala Harris got a white boy. Her pH balance is off and her mental stability got to be off. A hoe would have thrown off pH balance unless she's sneaking in. Now, if she's sneaking and fucking, then we might can let her be vice president. But we, there's no way. America. I'd rather for black people to go back to slavery than let a black woman run this goddamn country. Don't do it. Jay, listen, man, I'm against anything with a black woman running. Shit, you get your ass back in that bedroom and in the kitchen. But the White House, America, we can't do this here now. Hell no, hell no. I'd rather have another civil war before we let her run. This got me felt. Go back and get Barack, if anything. Find another mixed baby. But don't put no now. White's outburst is not merely a personal opinion but a reflection of broader societal undercurrents that persistently challenge the elevation of black women to positions of power. White's initial repudiation of the notion that a black woman could competently serve as commander-in-chief reveals a deeply ingrained skepticism towards female leadership, particularly within the African-American community. His assertion, rooted in a patriarchal view, challenges the very foundations of gender equality, questioning the capacity of black women to navigate the intricate dynamics of political leadership. This critique is further compounded by White's reference to Kamala Harris' mixed-race identity and her marriage to a white man. By fixating on her racial heritage and personal life, White's commentary diverts attention from her political qualifications and experience, instead focusing on aspects that should be irrelevant in the evaluation of her candidacy. This diversionary tactic undermines the discourse on her potential leadership capabilities and serves to perpetuate racial and gender biases. The notion that a black woman's pH balance could be affected by her relationship with a white man is an egregious display of misogyny, veiled under the guise of racial purity. This argument not only demeans Harris but also perpetuates harmful stereotypes about interracial relationships. White's fixation on this irrelevant aspect of her personal life detracts from substantive political debate, reducing a complex individual to crude biological determinism. White's hypothetical suggestion that Kamala Harris might be more acceptable if she were sneaking and a is a reprehensible attempt to impose traditionalist and patriarchal constraints on her agency. This suggestion underscores a regressive viewpoint that seeks to control and limit the roles that black women can play in society, particularly in positions of power and influence. It is a stark reminder of the persistent obstacles that women of color face in their pursuit of leadership roles. The proposition that America would be better off returning to slavery than allowing a black woman to lead is an alarming and hyperbolic expression of resistance to change. This statement is emblematic of a deeper fear of progress and a clinging to outdated hierarchies. White's rhetoric here is not just an attack on Harris but a broader condemnation of efforts to achieve racial and gender equality. White's nostalgic invocation of slavery as preferable to female leadership is a chilling reminder of the lengths to which some will go to maintain the status quo. It reflects a profound discomfort with the dismantling of historical power structures and a resistance to the empowerment of marginalized groups. This perspective is antithetical to the principles of democracy and equality that underpin the American political system. The suggestion that Kamala Harris should be relegated to traditional domestic roles is a stark illustration of the gender bias that continues to pervade society. 
White's assertion that black women belong in the bedroom and the kitchen is an affront to the progress made in gender equality and an attempt to relegate women to subservient roles. This perspective is not only outdated but also fundamentally unjust. White's reference to America's readiness for a civil war rather than accepting a black woman as president is a hyperbolic and incendiary statement designed to provoke fear and resistance. It reveals a deep-seated animosity towards the idea of female leadership and a willingness to resort to extreme measures to prevent it. This rhetoric is dangerous and undermines the principles of democratic governance. The call to go back and get Barack or find another mixed-race leader while rejecting Kamala Harris highlights a selective acceptance of diversity. It suggests that certain forms of racial and gender representation are more palatable than others, perpetuating a hierarchy within the fight for equality. This selective acceptance is indicative of the ongoing struggle within the African American community to reconcile issues of identity and representation. White's vitriolic diatribe against Kamala Harris is emblematic of the broader societal challenges that women of color face in their pursuit of leadership roles. His rhetoric underscores the persistent barriers of racism and sexism that continue to impede progress towards a more inclusive and equitable political landscape. It is a stark reminder of the work that remains to be done in dismantling these systemic obstacles. The reaction to Kamala Harris' potential candidacy reveals the entrenched biases that still pervade American society. It is a clarion call for a re-evaluation of the criteria by which we judge our leaders, urging a shift away from personal prejudices and towards a focus on qualifications and capabilities. Harris' candidacy represents an opportunity to challenge these biases and to pave the way for a more inclusive and representative political system. In conclusion, Charleston White's reaction to Kamala Harris' potential presidential run is a microcosm of the broader societal resistance to female and minority leadership. His rhetoric, steeped in misogyny and racism, serves as a reminder of the persistent challenges that women of color face in their pursuit of leadership roles. It is an urgent call to confront and dismantle these biases fostering a political landscape that truly reflects the diversity and equality that America aspires to uphold.